Hey everyone, Andy here. I got a quick little ad hoc video I wanted to make about an article that I wrote in an online uh, media place called Rethinking 65. Now Rethinking 65 is a website with articles written for financial advisors uh, by financial advisors. But with that said, a lot of the content there is actually uh, still really good, still really relevant to, to individuals, to end users, to clients. So I, I think it's good to uh, share some of the some of the content there. Definitely take a look at the site. I, I think you'll like it, whether you're in the industry or not. There's a lot of valuable info. I, I've written a few articles there so far, and um, I've decided to focus my efforts in rethinking on rethinking 65 toward things I, I dislike or things I uh, would like changed about the industry, the financial advisory, financial services industry. Um, my most recent article from earlier this month, earlier in January 2022, is called "Let's Get Real About Life Insurance." And uh, I'll bring a, a copy up on a screen here. But um, I have the article in front of me. I just want to read through some of it and just give sort of my thoughts and some of the highlights about the article. Now, <laughs> I, I originally, uh, the working title I had was Life Insurance by Any Other Name is Still Life Insurance. But the, uh, the editor changed it to Let's Get Real About Life Insurance, which is fine. The gist is uh, I, I strongly dislike and I think it's a dis uh, disservice and injustice that um, life insurance is often sold in kind of a hidden way with minimal, if any, reference to the fact that it's life insurance. There'll be other fancy names and sort of marketing names given to it to try to sell it, but ultimately it's still life insurance. And, and so, so let's get into it. The article starts, I ask a hypothetical question. What do all the following products and strategies have in common? Tax-free retirement account, section 7702 plan, private reserve account, the laser fund, bank on yourself, and infinite banking. Any guesses? These are all just cash value life insurance. Um, creative marketing names to try to sell cash value life insurance. Now, I don't know how FINRA or the Securities and Exchange Commission or the Federal Reserve are okay with people selling life insurance with the names bank or fund or account in them, but nonetheless, you know, I, I, I digress. So wh what, do I, what, what do I not like about this? Well. Life insurance is first and foremost life insurance, right? It, it does have, you know, when you die, it pays out the, the state of death benefit to whomever your designated beneficiaries are. Pretty simple, everyone understands that. Uh, certain types of life insurance, cash value life insurance, does have other secondary ancillary features. You know, the primary feature will always be that death benefit payout because it is life insurance. The cash value policies have a secondary ancillary benefit of the ability to not only have a stated uh, death benefit, but also accumulate some cash value. So some of the money you pay every month, every year, however frequently you pay in premiums, some of it goes toward the cost of that pure life insurance, because again, it's ultimately life insurance. But some of the money instead goes into, um, it's not even technically an account, that's, that's a wrong way to call it, uh, a, a, cash, a cash value function, cash value feature. So it, it's in essence kind of a forced savings, if you will. So some of the money goes to the cost of the premium, you know, cost of the, the insurance, some goes into cash value. While the money is in the policy, any growth or any gains it has is not taxed along the way. The life insurance does have tax deferral, which is a really nice feature, really nice benefit. Um, and then eventually, years, potentially decades down the road, you can amass a really large cash value to these policies um, you know, you put in X amount of dollars and now you have something more than X amount of dollars in cash value. The, one of the big benefits of this is you can take loans against it. Technically, you're not, you're not taking money out of the policy by taking a loan. The money still stays in the cash value bucket, still earns whatever level of interest the insurance company is giving you. you, you you're in effect taking a personal loan from the insurance company and they're using the cash value to collateralize that loan. So the cash stays in the policy, uh, you're just getting a personal loan. Um, now, where these names like infinite banking or bank on yourself come in is they're sort of trying to arbitrage that the interest rate you get paid on your cash inside the policy is less than the interest you have to pay on that personal loan you take. To the extent that it is, you're borrowing money but your cash value is still going up. Could happen. Um, you have to make sure this is guaranteed such that you know that the rates can never flip-flop such that your rate on the loan is higher than the rate of interest you're earning in your cash value. But point is, uh, cash value life insurance does, does have these special features where you can accumulate cash value, any growth is tax deferred, and you can borrow against it down the road. Um, so long as you don't actually take money out, 
those borrowings are not taxable events. Like any form of debt, like any loan, whether you borrow against your house, you borrow on credit cards, you have student loans, the proceeds you get from loans are not taxable income. So if structured and used properly, cash value life insurance could be a way where you can get cash flow um, some point in life without having to pay tax on it. Now these policies could blow up and backfire if not structured properly because what if you have a loan outstanding, the policy lapses because there's still this ongoing cost of insurance because again, first and foremost, this is a life insurance product. So you always have to maintain the, the money, the cost, the, the expenses associated with having the life insurance. If and when you don't, and you have a loan outstanding, you need to pay the loan back, or you need to kick in more money and premium to keep the policy from lapsing. If the policy does lapse, and you have a loan outstanding, that's where these things could get ugly, where you could potentially have a big fat taxable distribution. So, so that, that's it for now. But point is that there are definitely secondary benefits to these policies, but the way they're often sold, there's they're sold first and foremost as this uh, fantastic savings, you know, tax-free retirement income tool, and they just sort of brush aside, yeah, well, it's life insurance, but yeah, don't worry about that. You know, they, they sell it for the secondary features, which is what I don't like. Um, technically, people who sell life insurance aren't even allowed to sell you a policy if you don't have a legitimate actual need for insuring the loss of your life. Now, in reality, it's a really low hurdle to, to get over, to, to uh, say, to justify, yes, someone needs X amount of life insurance. So that's really not a, a blocking point here, but technically these policies can't be sold for their secondary features of uh, you know, cash accumulation and, and the ability to take loans against it. They have to be sold because the person legitimately needs life insurance. So now, I, I uh, for better or worse, do often speak ill of, of some things in the insurance world, but it's not insurance itself that I dislike. It's the, the, what I feel is often uh, or occasionally underhanded, sort of deceptive, misleading sales tactics. I personally have a lot of life insurance, arguably more than I need, because I realize what it does, how it works, and the benefit it can provide. But I see so many twisted, tainted, um, you know, as seen on TV type pomp and flair salespeople out there pitching this stuff with all these magical marketing names and telling about all these features about cash value and tax free and income for life and et cetera with glossing over or, or just stuffing in the, the footnotes or disclaimers somewhere that this is life insurance, which, which isn't right. So let me take you through a real example I've seen. This was in a Facebook group I'm in, which is a lot of, seemingly a lot of insurance people all trying to sell to themselves. Uh, here's how the post went. So there was a post from one of the members. Question was, if you had just $1,000 to start saving for your teen, what would you do with it? An insurance salesperson who doesn't make it known she sells insurance, but I, I figured it out from you know series of uh, posts she's 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 done. The salesperson responds, "Laser fund." Again, the question was, if you had just one thousand dollars to start saving for your teen, what would you do with it? The insurance person says, "Laser fund." Another group member says, "What's that?" The insurance salesperson responds, "It's amazing. I'd love to tell you more about it." The responder says, "What's the ticker?" The insurance salesperson says, "I'm sorry." The responder replies back, what's the ticker symbol of the fund? I'll take a look. Insurance salesperson says, it's not a stock. Responder says, but you said it's a fund, so isn't there a ticker? Or is it a private fund like a hedge fund or something? I don't think hedge funds have tickers. To which the insurance salesperson responded, it's a financial vehicle that is properly structured to be max funded and tax advantaged. And scene. Nowhere in this exchange does it say this is a life insurance policy. There's zero mention of life insurance. It's, it was pitched as a fund. It is not a fund. It is not a security. Even when the, uh, the responder realized it's not a fund, the insurance salesperson said it's a financial vehicle, right? So no mention of the fact that it's life insurance. So now was what the insurance salesperson said completely wrong? Completely wrong? No. Um, misleading? Yes. Calling it a fund is, is just outright wrong, in my opinion, that that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Yet nonetheless, it is. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why the insurance commissioners are okay with people uh, marketing like this, but but so be it. Um, outside of calling it a fund, no, the 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 pitch here wasn't uh, necessarily wrong. Calling it a financial vehicle is accurate. Saying it's properly strung, structured to be max funded and tax advantaged, fine, that's accurate as well. So what do I don't like about this? I, I don't like that um, the insurance industry. It's no secret uh, has been historically very sales focused sometimes uh, many times to a detriment um, you know this predates me but anecdotally people insurance sales people used to go door to door you know knock on the doors ask to speak to the man in the house and say do you love your family 
uh, inevitably the man of the house would say yes and the insurance salesperson would say well you need insurance because if you die how are they going to support themselves boom done sold like it used to be a very aggressive overt sales culture um in, in many companies many agents it still unfortunately is my first job out of college over 20 years ago I, I wanted to be a financial advisor not really knowing what it was just wanted to help people with money uh, I interviewed at the handful of big places that were that were interviewing on campus at school and it was all uh, large insurance companies you all have heard of and a few of the large brokerages you all have heard of and it was all just sales uh, only one of those jobs had a small first year living stipend but otherwise they were all commission based it was all just go out give us a list of your family and friends go sell um, you know it was about sell this versus that because the payouts higher the commissions higher it was it was it was disgusting. I gave up on it and I stumbled into a corporate uh, actuarial job. Coincidentally, you know, at an insurance company, but not selling, not, uh, I was behind the scenes helping value and understand these products and price these products. So anyway, um, it, the insurance industry has a, a, a pretty strong sales culture behind it. And they realize that and, and they're trying to get away from it from what I see. They're trying to get more into real advisory uh, types of types of uh, types of gigs, you know, types of jobs. F trying to put the focus more on education and advising and teaching, less on selling. Yet you still have junk like this. People going around just clearly. It's a pitch. It's a sales pitch. It's when when. And part of the part of the issue is when your pay comes solely from consummating a sale. Of course, you're going to go out and have to pitch, have to sell, have to market, have to spin because that's how you get paid. You don't get paid for advice. You don't get paid for education. You get paid when you close a deal and someone buys a product from you. So that, that sort of drives a lot of it. Now that's a whole other issue I can, I can rant on for days, but it doesn't help the industry's image. There, it's a sales culture. They're slowly getting away from it, but it's still a very much a sales function because the, the pay is solely from commission uh, with, with, with insurance. If they're trying to revamp the image, revamp the brand of life insurance, stuff like this doesn't help, right? G given these sort of masked, uh, fancy slick marketing name uh, things to, to what's ultimately cash value life insurance isn't doing anyone any justice. So if it looks like a duck, right? In, in my opinion, uh, if, if the industry wants to perceive how it's viewed, how its products are understood, how it's used, you gotta be more upfront with it. Don't call cash value life insurance a tax-free retirement account, a private reserve account, a section 7702 plan, infinite banking, bank on yourself. No, call it life insurance. Now, definitely explain the very valuable, potentially valuable, uh, secondary features of life insurance, which is the ability to accumulate cash value for all the earnings to be tax deferred, the ability to take loans against in the future, tremendously important and valuable features. Do not overlook those, right? But don't flip flop it. You, you, you can't make it such that those are the main selling points that you're going after. And the fact that it's life insurance is just relegated to some disclaimer that you put there because you have to. Turn it around, say, hey, did you know with life insurance, there's some really advantageous, uh, not to call them loopholes, but you know, advantageous areas of the tax code that give some very preferential treatment to the ability to accumulate money in here, to, to borrow money out of it, very tax advantage, more so than other products and, and, and strategies that exist. So why not consider it? But call it what it is, you know, it's life insurance. Start with that, don't, don't hide that. So that's that. Um, you know, if, if my thought is if you feel the only way or the best way for you to sell this product is to call it something it's not by deflecting and calling it a fund or an account or a banking type strategy or product well i should tell you something right the problem is uh you probably have to rethink how you sell it rethink the product itself if it's that tarnished if it has that much um dislike against it that you feel you have to call it something it's not to ultimately sell it well that's not cool so what's the purpose of this article in, in me summing it up for you well kind of three things First, I just want to make you aware of this, especially in the retirement planning circles that I'm in, that you're probably in if you subscribe to this channel and follow my content. Um, you will inevitably come across people selling things called tax-free retirement account or a laser fund or private reserve account. Just know, be aware, these are cash value life insurance. Now, they're not necessarily bad. I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying you shouldn't uh, perhaps consider it for you and your situation, but just know what it ultimately is and know what you're getting. Um, then you're gonna get this large, if you do further pursue looking into one of these plans, you're gonna get a large uh, contract and a large illustration. 
that'll project out is basically this big fat spreadsheet that'll show you anticipated growth and loans and how this policy is going to perform. Make sure you understand that in the contract in depth. These are very large uh, contracts. There's, there's lots of moving parts. There's lots of things that can and will change throughout the life of your policy. While there may be guarantees now for what interest you're going to earn over the next year on your cash accumulation part, that interest rate can change. You know, the guaranteed amount of what you're going to get on the interest can change with each interest credit crediting period. You have to understand that. So it wouldn't hurt if you do look into one of these policies to hire an external third party to review it for you. You know, an objective third party who understands it, who can break it down, who can tell you in plain English how this works. When's it good? When's it not? Does it make sense for you? Now, whether you hire a uh, financial advisor or planner who works hourly and doesn't sell anything other than his or her time or there are actually some uh, ex-insurance sales folks, you know, people in the industry that, that just do consulting on stuff like this. They're not formally financial advisors, it's just a, a third party who knows insurance really well, who, who will work with people to independently review uh, policies and proposals. And finally, it sort of ties in the second one, but make sure you fully un understand what you have. You know, after having someone break it down for you, um, do you fully get it? If not, do not buy this and not just this product but any product if you don't fully understand what it is how it works how it could benefit or hurt you step away from it right so make sure you fully understand what it does uh, make sure you understand the life insurance component of it and how the cash value of taking loans against it can interact with the life insurance component and vice versa so that's that hope you like it there will be a, a link to the article if you want to read the whole thing uh in, in the notes of this show and i uh, hope you enjoyed it take care Bye bye